Cass. And I'm Tease. And welcome to Author's Note. Don't like, don't listen. Tease, how are you doing today? Cass, I feel like it's been so long. It's only been a week, but I feel like it's been so long <laughs> since I've talked to you. <laughs> I feel like not even that much has happened this week. Um, This week went by really, really fast for me. So I feel like it's... I don't know. For some reason, I feel like I haven't talked to you in a really long time. And maybe it's because I just like, I don't know. Maybe it's because an episode didn't come out. So we have nothing. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Tisa and I actually don't talk at all outside of episodes. Literally. Cass and I. We never correspond. We block each other. And then every week we unblock each other. Mm -hmm. And... (laughs) We send each other one message that just says, this is this week's topic. (laughs) We go in blind and the one person does all the research while the other one sucks it up and learns as it goes along. (laughs) This is not true. Cass and I talk very, very often. (laughs) On a a slightly related note to that, before we get started, can I make a, a miniature announcement? Yeah. Just as a kind reminder to uh listeners both new and old that we are just two people who despite having a podcast are not professionals um we don't you know have doctorates or anything in fan media studies or things like that we are just two people who are genuinely interested in the subject and do our own research in our little free time that we have so you know keep that in mind we're not authorities so you know we try and do our due diligence but you know mistakes happen here and there but in the same way that we try to be kind to the topics we're talking about you know be kind to us please don't be mean to me or i will cry (laughs) (laughs) no one's been very mean to us no 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 one's been exceedingly mean to us but you know just as a just as a good reminder as we kind of accrue more followers with time which we hit a thousand all-time downloads which is really cool and thank you so much for that that's amazing it feels really good i've been uh pretty excited also shout out Mm -hmm. to our good pal leota who was on our hitalia roleplay episode they (laughs) modded a khajiit into skyrim that named pronouns the khajiit (laughs) and included the damn you asses fat with your pronouns uh Mm -hmm. line that i said during I'm our... very proud of our Skyrim romance episode. It's if good. you haven't listened to it, please go check it out. It's good. I think it's a very fun episode. Yeah. So now that we got this uh, housekeeping, how are you doing, Cass? Um, time has escaped me. Understandable. We're in, we're in December. It's December, babes. I feel like I'm running at a month minimum latency, where mm. I feel like I've just entered November. Yeah. It's not November anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I'm still like, damn, I'm really excited for Halloween. And then yeah. I realize it's December. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love Halloween. Well, have you been watching anything during this uh, very, very fast week? Um, Up until last night, no. I've just really been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. But last night, I got it in my brain that I was finally going to watch Devil Man Cry Baby. So I watched all of that last night. What did you think? And this is your first Yuasa series, right? Yes. Uh, what did you think? I really enjoyed the animation. Oh, so um, That's and the I... best part. <laughs> it really is. Um, I liked it. Uh, you know, I watched... Uh... <laughs> call me out but i only really watch english dubs just because Mm -hmm. i like to be able to work while i I I watch stuff yeah um but i really enjoyed it uh you know it's it's really gratuitous and oversexed and i ended up having a a conversation with a friend afterward while we were watching it where Mm -hmm. i i feel like for a very long time we sort of gave more acclaim to series, and I think we still do, that are really violent and gratuitous, mm-hmm. as if that somehow allows it more merit. And I think part of that in animation stems from this idea that so much of animation is for children, that when something is so clearly not for children, we want to laud it with a lot of praise. I understand. Um, I, I, I don't think, you know, the series was like anything outstanding or groundbreaking but i did really enjoy it i thought it was really cool Um, that ending was i'm a really big uh masaki yuasa fan like Mm -hmm. really really big and uh i don't think crybaby is his best work i'm 
more in the camp of Ping Pong the Animation, and I also really love Kameno no Zume, which is one of his older works, but it's very clearly, because it is one of his earlier works, it feels a little bit more raw, which I really appreciate, and it's once again like a human and somebody who is not clearly human romance and Mm -hmm. uh it's kind of like a romeo and juliet situation and i really like it a lot uh but ping pong oh my god i love ping pong so much (laughs) the one thing that did make me like really uncomfortable Mm -hmm. with devil man was uh the colorism jumped out Uh, yeah i i warned you i was like hmm there's a lot of weird funky little colorism in it i mean yeah it's a really fun series but like why did you have to darken akira's skin baby Mm. well akira and miko yeah and miko which yeah that sucks miki square so good but like literally once you're a devil like your skin darkens and i think that's kind of whack yeah like, you're, well and there's some and like the hyper athleticism that comes with that yep. yeah there's uh yeah there's a there's some deep-seated racism in it and i mean yuasa unfortunately that is an issue with yuasa's works I, like i mean kick heart is also another good example of it um like there's a lot of weird hypersexualization, and uh kick heart's only like a 13 minute short but still there's something not right about it mm-hmm. yeah which is unfortunate yeah. because his uh animation style and just his whole uh directing experience is so wonderful and so well, and fresh, i love it because it's but... it's not afraid to do what animation is meant to do which yeah. is to like yeah. exaggerate and push feeling mm-hmm. and there was actually only like one moment in the show where i was like oh, okay this is too much and ironically it was a scene that had been secondhand hyped up to me by uh, a person we know who was like oh this scene is so incredible it's so raw you know this father's contemplating because he has to kill his child mm-hmm. and it's like the scene is so overacted in terms of animation on like the father's part where he's like flailing around and wailing as he like Mm -hmm. psychs himself up to kill his child who's now been possessed by a demon and i'm just like this is like the least impactful moment of the series for me Mm -hmm. like i'm i'm more stricken by like this little demon baby that's like a a little squid and has like tears welling up as opposed to this like just just dad flailing around trying to collect himself i don't know i would suggest ping pong then because it's a lot more quiet and Mm -hmm. understated because it's about high schoolers playing table tennis which like love it yeah like that doesn't sound like anything great but it's sports animes are it's you know (laughs) what very deeply emotional yeah it's a very it's a very deeply emotional but ping pong really is just leagues leagues and leagues and leagues above any other sports anime i've ever watched Mm. just the emotional um it you know what it is it tackles the very real issues when it comes to training groom i should say grooming grooming a child to become the perfect Mm. athlete because i mean the same way that we talk about the olympics in a lot of sports anime it's it's a very real possibility more so Mm -hmm. than it's just like i have a dream and i'm gonna reach this and i'm not really all that experienced but i sure know i'm gonna be the best one day no ping pong is not about that ping pong is about hurt and anger and um giving up and stuff like and it's just Mm -hmm. oh my god the christmas eve scene oh okay i'll stop talking about that but anything (laughs) else have you watched anything this week (laughs) teeth Cass, you know what i did what'd you watch i read (laughs) all of hunger banks true love oh god how was it by joy (laughs) tomorrow mentioned in our last episode (laughs) oh my god i was off the shits i read that whole thing (laughs) would you recommend it it was really fun (laughs) so um it was one of those things that i was like i don't know if i really like this like i don't know if it's good but then like I got about five chapters in, and I was at work, and I was like, all I want to do is read about this dumb little (laughs) werewolf, and I just kept reading, and kept reading, and then I finished it after work on Friday. But that's great. That's fantastic. You know what it was? It was really fun. It was needed. I feel like it itched this deep monkey need that has not been touched since, like, I read Twilight, but there's sex in this, so I was like, (laughs) ah! So... 
but like, worth noting if you don't want any sex in your romance there is a version that doesn't have that which i think is really cool yes it was very very cool and there's also a short like uh joy demara also published two shorts one that's just a fluff one and then one that's just a smut one and they're both standalones and what's just really nice is that like it it wasn't a love triangle it was an established relationship and then a third person came into said relationship which was really enjoyable i must say Tease, dare I tell you that she also posts uh, shorts and fix for her own work on AO3? <laughs> sip, 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 here we go. <laughs> okay, well, looks like I'm going to do some digging after this episode. But it hey, was good. unrelated. Yeah. Uh, you want to know what else happened to me this week? What happened to you this week? Eskel has decided he really likes playing with scissors. <laughs> Eskel, no! They are thankfully, like, one, they're in a sheath that is, like, locked around them, so he can't get to any part of it that is dangerous. Mm -hmm. But it's genuinely terrifying. And then at one point this week, I was sewing, and I put down my, like, little needle catch thing. Mm -hmm. It's, like, a little, um, like, wristlet that has a big magnet on it. And I had one needle on it, thank God. But my cat darling little child goes over and decides I'm gonna weaponize myself and attaches it to his collar (laughs) just like dips down and it like connects to his tags and I look over and like my cat's just parading around with this giant (laughs) magnet with a needle on it (laughs) Eskel woke up and chose violence (laughs) Eskel woke up and chose violence every day of his life (laughs) (laughs) so uh what are what's the topic of today's episode Kyle's you hear about this show called South Park? Oh, I sure have. <laughs> Tease yeah. decided that we were going to do an episode on the Tweak and Craig. And it was a nightmare taking notes for this as I was watching the episode because I kept wanting to write Creek X Tweg for some reason. Um, if it makes like you I feel forgot better. their names apart from each other. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I was very very stoned when i watched this episode (laughs) and my notes god i wish that were me (laughs) my notes it just starts off with i ate the weed cookie and i will now perish in 2015 south park on season 19 episode an episode called craig x tweak or tweak x craig apologies is episode six of the season And the HBO Max description of the episode is, The news of a romantic relationship between Tweak and Craig hits South Park Elementary. Mr. Mackey tries to figure out who started the rumor. Meanwhile, Cartman, who struggles to understand his friend's relationship, finds he has an admirer of his own. And oh my god. It's been a very long time since I watched South Park. Uh, I watched South Park with relative frequency, I would say, in middle school and high school. So I have some exposure to the show and I'm like relatively familiar with the characters and the very specific kind of bullshit this show gets up to. Mm -hmm. Shall we break down first uh, a brief summary, uh, bullet points of what happens in this episode? I feel like, yeah, sure. So the episode opens up on a school, it it gets right into it, Mm -hmm. like, (laughs) <laughs> There's not a moment where something isn't happening in the show. So it will it opens up on a school assembly that is specifically a celebration of South Park Elementary's Asian American students. And Wendy says, Yaoi is a blend of emotion and beauty involving two people whose love is looked down upon. The art tries to show that all love is magical, like Lisa Akamoto's piece, Tweak and Craig, Forbidden Love. And then proceeds to showcase real fan art of Craig and Tweak engaged in various sexual positions. Woof, these are, again, underaged elementary school children in the canon of this show. None of it's official sex, like sex with a capital S, but it is very much so... There's, like, one image of, like... It's feeling up, it's blushing, it's, it's, it's all the shit... That people, like, okay, hi, I was really, I was freshman year of college, we all watched South Park together as a communal group, so I probably up until season 16 I've seen all of, so I've actually never seen this episode before, but um, 
It's very obvious that if you existed on the internet at some point and you have seen South Park fan art, it's exactly what you think it is. It's, yeah. It's it's yeah. shipping. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of isn't. Don't people usually call this like cheesecakey? Like it's kind of that soft pseudo sort of soft core. You know. Maybe I'm it's just making up words. Cake. I don't know if it's cheesecake. I, I forget. Oh, I would hope it's know. not cheesecake. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the mention of cheese revolving anywhere around sex. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it then snaps, you know, intermittently to shots of the elementary school audience. Mm-hmm. And, like, everyone is, like, clapping and applauding and going, like, wow. <laughs> but uh, Craig and Tweak are both, like, very confused and upset by this. Uh, the general group of boys of like Kenny, Stan, Cartman, um, Kyle, Timmy. Yeah, I always forget about Butters. Kyle. Butters is there. Butters. Butters, Butters is there in a neck brace for some reason. But they're all confused and unsure of why their not gay friends are being portrayed as gay and being talked about as being gay. And it, it then shows. I think it's Craig approaching the collection of korean and japanese girls who are all sat together on the stairs drawing together presumably yaoi and all speaking to each other in japanese and korean and there's like a moment where craig's like what did she say and one of the korean girls is like i don't know i don't speak japanese and it's like oh god and then tweak and craig are brought into the principal's office and the principal does not listen to them as they both insist they're not gay and instead the principal teaches them about affirmative consent and makes them like role play these scenarios of saying, you know, like, Craig, can I touch your penis? Now, Tweak, what would you say to that kind of thing? This is the season with uh, PC Principal. So the whole theme of this season is being quote unquote woke as a community. So this is the season where the Whole Foods comes in, there's gentrification throughout all of South Park. <laughs> My favorite <laughs> moment of the episode <laughs> Is what is it? Is it Kyle's dad? Is it Stan's dad? I think it's Kyle's dad. If yeah, is... going, wow, we just got our first Whole Foods two weeks ago. And we already have our first gay kids. So it's, it's like, so cool. It's like a rite of passage for South Park to have a gay couple. Like, they mm-hmm. feel like they're progressive because of it. So it, yeah. that's so that's some vague background for the season's theme. Yeah. PC principle. And then, <laughs> the boys all get it in their head that being gay is something that is decided upon by Asians. By the Japanese, specifically. Yes, it later becomes, you know, established in the episode that it's the Japanese specifically who decide this after Kyle or Stan's dad, which I don't know any of the parents. I'm not that it's deeply Randy. invested. It's Randy. It's Randy. <laughs> it's Randy. <laughs> Randy, like, calls up, like, a prime minister of China to, to figure this out. And they're like, no, Yaoi's from Japan. And he's like, Oh, so it's the Japanese who decide. And it's like, oh my God, South Park. I don't know what I expected. I, I Anyway, um, the adults are like overly aggressively supportive. And in this, not listening to Craig or Tweak, you know, insist that they're not gay. And so they're all just like randomly giving the kids money, which geez, God, I wish somebody would just randomly give me a hundred dollars. I would love to come gay. out and get a hundred dollars. That would make my life so much easier. And then the entire town gathers to appreciate and purchase Craig X Tweak art <laughs> from, like, this little, like, support your local artist. And it's, like, very clearly, like, spoofing on a con artist alley. And it's just, you have, like, all these just, like, random adults buying this fan art and hanging it in their homes. And there's, like, these music montages. <laughs> and then Cartman suddenly begins to worry that his gay friends might be interested in him you know like like any straight dude who is being exposed to gay people for the first time the first concern is what if they are interested in me and cartman has this weird manifestation of himself but miniature as cupid that becomes interested in him after Craig and Tweak start fighting at school. And, like, this little Cupid manifestation comes about because Cartman's like, oh, they just need a little help. Like, you know, go shoot them with an arrow. Tweak notably says at one point, the whole world wants me to be something I'm not. Kyle says at one point in a discussion with the rest of the boys, Yowie's an art style for girls by girls because they like fictionalizing two guys in a relationship. The point is there's nothing about it that means Tweak and Craig are actually gay at all. 
Tweek and Craig then decide to pretend to publicly break up in front of the group of Asian girls, which then, like, kind of collects the whole school around them. But Tweek turns it into, like, this cheating scandal where he, you know, inadvertently further furthers the idea and rumor that Craig is gay and that Craig is manipulative and that he never cared about Creek. And it just turns into, like, this whole huge dramatic fiasco and the entire town publicly mourns as say something starts to play <laughs> overlapping all of it that is ruined me <laughs> oh my god um, oh. and then craig and tweak have a resolution wherein the episode writing starts to pull a lot from like established romantic tropes where uh tweak apologizes and he starts saying stuff that like you know craig made him believe in himself in a way that he never had before and craig changed something in him and uh the boys hold hands and walk through the town together and they play like an actual cosplay video of some craig and tweak cosplayers and cartman after spending you know the entire episode with this conflict of you know his cupid self being attracted to him and wanting to be in a relationship with him and wanting to date him cartman is like yeah we'll go on one date and then fantasizes and masturbates to the idea of his mini cupid self uh having sex with him and that's how the episode ends so that's tweak x craig how do you feel <sighs> tired <laughs> yeah So, to give some more context, South Park has obviously existed as a fandom literally since the beginning of the show. There's been roleplay circles and fan art easily since the dawn of DeviantArt. Same with roleplay sites and forums, just like every other Angel Fire site that exists. There were South Park ones, too. And I did some digging, and there's 19,500 South Park fics on ff.net and then there's about there's 10,422 fix for South Park on AO3 and the most popular ship on AO3 for AO South Park is in fact Creek and it's 3,828 fix. Yeah. So I mean more than mm-hmm. yeah, about 38% of the which you know that's pretty close to half of the fix on AO3 mm-hmm. are, are Creek fix. And even um, uh, the creators of South Park, Matt Parker, fuck, I always get their names good. <laughs> Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Thank yeah. you, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. They even kind of contemplated it, and at first they thought this was like a total just shot in the dark. They thought it was hilarious. They were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why do people ship this? This is so fucking weird. And then mm-hmm. the more that they worked on this episode, the more they kind of realized that the fans genuinely care about this couple. <laughs> yeah. Which Well, yeah, and now it's like sweet. an established background yeah. couple and now they're in the show. A legit couple. Like, even on the South Park Studios website, it mentions, because uh, there's, like, technically a wiki that's on the South Park Studios website, and it has character profiles and stuff like that. And it even has Tweek and Craig listed as each other's partners. And in Craig at one point did have a girlfriend, and in the description it says before finding his true sexuality. So this insinuates that Craig might in fact legitimately be gay and mm-hmm. this isn't just a crapshoot. And as the series progresses, Craig and Tweak are shown pretty well together. Tweak doesn't yeah, they, have as many anxiety of... attacks and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And Tweak, if you're totally unfamiliar with South Park, is a character that is... His parents own a coffee shop and they're constantly giving him coffee. And the coffee may, in fact, be laced with uh, maybe methamphetamine. Mm-hmm. But he's an incredibly twitchy character. Yeah. Um, and is just, like, is generally all over the place and, like, is described by other characters as being, quote-unquote, spazzy. Mm-hmm. And so you see, like, throughout the progression of the season after this that, like, Tweak noticeably settles down and, like, frequently Craig is seen holding his hand in like the backgrounds of episodes and there's even an episode which focuses upon you know their relationship in part where it's Craig just learning that sometimes he needs to listen to his partner as opposed to like trying to fix his problems um 
Matthew Black writes in a Medium article, What started off as a fringe shipping held by a tiny segment of the show's fans has now become a very real, very canon relationship. The showrunners have now confirmed them as a real couple, and since Tweak X Craig aired, the two characters are constantly seen hanging out together, usually holding hands. This isn't played off as a joke, it's just a normal aspect of the show now. Which, okay. That feels pretty Let's, good. Yeah. I mean, Tease, you ran a... You ran a little poll on your own Twitter last night. Would you like to talk about that? <laughs> um, so I posted a poll out of curiosity to make all my friends mad. <laughs> and I straight up asked, who has better LGBT rep, Supernatural or South Park? And I did, in fact, get ratioed by my friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, South Park won. 74.2% yeah. versus 258 and this begs the question, like, even if something is just a joke, can it still be good representation? Well, so I think the really interesting thing that happens with South Park, right, is that South Park so frequently punches in every single direction, both up, down, sideways, what have you, and makes fun of everyone, everyone, because despite being Republicans, uh, Matt, stone and trey parker i mean they're like they're aggressive libertarians like it's it's pretty obvious um they they kind of hate extremists on both sides in equal measure take that for what you will um and and so the fact that like the show isn't aggressively anti-gay and this episode isn't anti-gay this episode is very much just like yaoi's kind of funny and like the concept of this is pretty hysterical and it's it's less making fun of like the idea of this relationship and more the idea of individuals who are you know shipping characters you know more than anything i think like i don't think tweak and craig together are a joke really no and i don't think so either at this point i think it started off as one but then the more they mm -hmm. worked on and even in interviews there's some audio commentary from the season where the two of them talk about how it was like, yeah, this is a joke, but also like we kind of really like them together now. Mm-hmm. And where kind of appreciate contrast that. that to supernatural. We need Dean's to stop sexuality about has always no, no. I, like I, I'm talking about this. I didn't get to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you and Panda talked about it. I didn't get to talk about it. Dean's sexuality has always been the butt of the joke, and like there's all these like little passes within supernatural about you know like men either either being interested in dean or coming on to dean or like dean making you know inadvertent sexual passes at men and like that's very much like a joke like they are played for laughs and so castiel and dean like no part of that at all to me reads as anything but weak indulgence to fans at the very end of the show's life in like the most ridiculous selfish way possible Mm. okay i can see that if you ship destiel i have no problem with that i do have a problem with people telling me that like the representation of destiel in the show is like amazing and transformative for media because it's not (laughs) like i don't even watch shit's creek i don't even (laughs) care about shit's creek just watch that instead it has like Mm -hmm. legit rev that's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like genuinely speaking, though, Shit's Creek is a is wonderful representation because Shit's Creek at no point even lets the question of homophobia enter the equation. It just doesn't exist. Which is so nice, and I, this begs the question: that is this hyper obsession with homosexuality? Is that in a way a form of homophobia? Because, I mean, obviously it's fetishization at the end of the day. But when you so heavily detach something from a person, doesn't that kind of make you feel like, in a way, it's insulting? Like, I hate, like, I mean, me as a gay person, I really hate the shirts that are like, I'm so gay, I can't think straight. I'm like, shut up. Shut up. (laughs) Shut up. I think it's important to realize and understand for everyone Mm -hmm. and for us to keep in mind that 
what is empowering for some people is not for others. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that everybody's experience with their own queerness is going to be different, Mm -hmm. you know, your expression of that is also going to be different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like somebody wearing a shirt that says like, I'm so gay, I can't think straight. doesn't hurt me. You know, it might, it might annoy me, you know, cause (laughs) it's delicious. Be proud of who you are, but like that Mm -hmm. ain't me. I want to go back to this point of fetishization because we talk about that a lot in fan communities and this idea of like straight women fetishizing gay men. And I think there is a difference between fetishization is like, it's very difficult to kind of define that. And it's a little bit like, you know, pornography and that it's like, I can't define it for you, but I can name it when I see it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people inadvertently look at, you know, people who are only drawing gay men loving men couples and immediately wanted to cry fetishization, you know, either because of their their own perceptions or, or their own feelings. But there there is something to be said about the fact that, like, a lot of times the characters that are provided to us, which have more depth, which have more nuance, are unfortunately men. And so there's more to work with there. Um, and that is an issue of television production and narrative production being, you know misogynist and and coded against women for a very very long time um and there's also i think it is safer to engage with fictional men than it is with real men Mm -hmm. and so especially as a gay person as well oh especially as a gay person yeah um i mean there there are so many different aspects for why individuals gravitate more towards men loving men ships as opposed to women loving women ships and a lot of that can be tied to you know internalized misogyny and internalized lesbophobia and like there's there's so many different answers for why it happens that i don't love to see people immediately jump for like the fetishization accusation Mm -hmm. because i think so often that's not actually what's happening it's a whole bunch of pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. okay like yeah and you know fetishization uh is a genuine issue wherein you have people who only like men loving men in in the imagined sphere and Mm -hmm. don't like it in practice and aren't actually supportive of gay people or who think that, you know, reading Yaoi is in some way supportive of LGBTQIA individuals, which like, it's not, (laughs) you're not doing any active, uh, activism by like buying your Yaoi doujinshi, you know, (laughs) like that's not how that works. Um, and I, I think it is an interesting conversation about like, why are women specifically often writing these men loving men relationships? And it's not it's not just women. Tease, you, you sent me a Discord message. I um, sure did. Yeah, hey, let's maybe talk about the fact that uh, they made it just Asian girls. Yeah, so I looked it up. South Park does have a cult following both in China and Japan. The Japanese fandom mostly hangs out on Pixie, while the Chinese fandom mostly hangs out on Lofter. But the only country in Asia where South Park actually airs is India. And <laughs> I I mean, at least according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia could be omitting some information. Yeah, but I'm I mean, that really doesn't sure. mean it's inaccessible. I mean, clearly it's not inaccessible. Yeah, I mean, clearly it exists and you could find it on Daily Motion or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. or under a VPN on Hulu or yeah. God, whatever. But like, there's something to be said here about how, why are we putting the blame specifically on Asian women and also using... Because an, South Park is racist. Yeah, and using an <laughs> English accent to say boys ravu, like... Yeah. Mm, mm, it's not good. It's not good. Well, and that's 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 the issue with South Park as a whole is that again it punches in every direction, mm-hmm. so that everybody gets hit with shit. Yep. And it, I think, in a lot of ways, that odd and broad attempt to hit everybody leaves the comedy really failing to come to any sort of natural conclusions or like any sort of moral standing in a way that to me as a viewer is really dissatisfying mm. where it's like i feel like a lot of times you can't walk away from an episode of south park with like a very clear idea of what they were trying to communicate mm-hmm. as a whole because it's it's almost it, it's it's like um 
it's like fruit salad it's just everything thrown together yeah 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 so i i do think the really nice thing about this episode is that fan artists were asked Mm -hmm. for permission to feature their work Mm -hmm. and a lot of them actually seemed really excited to have their work featured there were there were two who were interviewed by vulture who were like genuinely really excited to kind of be given this platform and i think that's also really indicative of the experience and it's like the art wasn't being made fun of at all it was the concept of shipping that was being made fun of and this didn't feel like a weird move to like make people uncomfortable or explicitly make fun of the fan base though they do yeah which it's like yeah yeah <sighs> Uh, again like yeah. who are you actually trying to hit with this matt and, and trey like i don't honestly while watching it i felt like every straight guy who is what you know actually you know this reminded me of this episode there's an episode mm. in the office where michael kisses what's his oscar name? oscar thank you it's We're... called gay witch hunt yes and it's like the most popular episode it is my favorite episode iTunes. personally however if you're a straight person and you tell me this is your favorite episode of the office I will pull a gun on you. Like, (laughs) no. (laughs) Like, Gay Witch Hunt as a straight person cannot be your favorite episode. Like, I refuse to allow that because, once again, it has to do partially with harassing of gay people. It has Mm -hmm. to do with forcing people into a corner. It has to do with really uncomfortable. It's an experience that straight people don't have. Yeah, it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. And, like, the fact that michael hypothet like technically sexually assaults oscar for it as well yeah. makes me like totally wig out and with this uh tweak x craig episode it's kind of like the same vein for me where it's like if you are a person who understands the genuine emotion and love and connection for these characters i mean half of the fans in south park are anywhere from about 13 to 25 ish so Mm -hmm. that's a lot of minors and that's a lot of minors figuring themselves out and there's definitely i i don't want to be like protect south park shippers because go away they're minors they're children and even though they're not played up as children and none of this is shown explicitly there obviously is explicit Mm -hmm. of this stuff i i think what's really interesting is that so this episode goes to a hypersexualized place with cartman Mm -hmm. thus showing that like they are not afraid to have this like weird hypersexualization of the children in the show Mm -hmm. in the same way that like big mouth does um which is also worth talking about but they don't hypersexualize within the actual real world meta of the show Mm -hmm. craig and tweak their relationship is very platonic and very chaste Mm -hmm. and all their interactions with one another in this episode are very chaste and like the most they do is hold hands despite like pc principal you know obviously trapping them in this like sexual conversation Mm -hmm. matt and trey could have pushed this episode to become something that was like really over the top and like even the fan art that is shown where it's like one of them is naked you know no penis is shown but one of them is naked and the other one's on top of them like they didn't put it in that place, which, like, in that way, I think, sort of sort of further legitimizes the legitimacy of this mm-hmm. relationship in this show mm-hmm. because it's not taken to that extreme factor. It's kind of like, if you're part of this, you can make fun of this because mm-hmm. you understand the nuances of it. But if you're just a straight guy who likes South Park and you don't have any interaction with the fans, whether it be via youtube and people making cosplay music videos or buying fan art or reading fix or whatever there's a very big difference between the satisfaction you get out of this episode by laughing at quote-unquote freaks who care about this shit versus mm-hmm. people who are a part of this sub this microcosm of a fandom and mm-hmm. it's it can be very personal like yeah it's ex- it's exciting to see your stuff actually highlighted because because it was a, a call to action it was like hey we're doing this episode drop your links like people mm-hmm. genuinely sprung at this and i think mm-hmm. that's exciting for them to see their own work like don't be mean to people who are having fun <laughs> and aren't hurting you i mean there's thinking on it too there is some genuine sweetness to seeing this like mock-up of an artist alley in the show and like 
none of the girls are being made fun of yes, for yes. making this artwork. And they do but it you, together. Like, they, yeah. they're they friends. They're friends, and they're indulging in something that they enjoy. Like, yeah, I wish it wasn't quote-unquote real people within the series. Mm-hmm. But however, I mean, that's just how South Park works, unfortunately. Yeah. But, like, if you've tabled at a convention, you've probably had the experience... If you have tabled at a convention and had any sort of ship art, you have almost certainly had the experience of someone approaching you and just giving you totally unwanted and unasked for feedback about either the ship you're portraying or some aspect of your artwork or like why are you drawing them gay they're not gay in the show and it's like hey buddy back off (laughs) one time i was cosplaying and somebody asked my friend and I to do a ship picture. Nope. Totally <laughs> nope. inappropriate. We were 17 and 16. It was... No! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Nope. Not allowed. This friend also listens to the podcast. So, hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, it was not fun. And I was like, oh, I could kiss her on the cheek. And, like, the person who was taking the photo was genuinely disappointed. I was like, I don't want to kiss my friend. <laughs> I'm 17. <laughs> Real people do not exist uh, for your entertainment. Mm-hmm. No. Even entertainers do not exist for your entertainment. No. Nope. That being said, if you want to write fan fiction about me. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I'm not allowing that. <laughs> Cass says no tease fan fiction. <laughs> Unless- if you write fan fiction about me, I will hunt you down. <laughs> I think there is something sort of nice about South Park unwittingly acknowledging that you can be in a gay relationship, but not identify as gay or even bisexual, Mm -hmm. which I I think is something that, you know, maybe doesn't get talked about enough or that people are, you know, are, are maybe not ready to talk about as much, but like you can be in a gay relationship and still identify as straight. Your labels only exist for you and you don't have to justify yourself to anybody else no matter what. Mm. Cass. Tease. Where can we find you? You can find me to call me out about my feelings on Castile and Dean on uh, Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram at Valhethella. That's V A L H E T H E L L A. Tease, where can we find you? You can call me out for watching movies that are quote unquote morally bad at Vicuniad, V I C U N A D. And you could follow and make the call out post towards us on twitter which is authors note pod as well as that's our instagram you can reach out to us via email at authors note pod at gmail.com and if you're interested in supporting us through the inevitable fallout of our call out you can send us you know some tips on coffee that's k-o-f-i that's just authors note pod over there again we do this in our free time so any amount of help really helps us out you know, five coffees pays for a whole month of our hosting and streaming and distribution. Our music, Please Don't Call Him Out, is by James Wyulo, and you can find him on Bandcamp under James Y. Uh, you can find the artist of our wonderful cover art at Nyaliest on Twitter. That's N Y A L L I E S T. She doesn't really make a lot of art, so she doesn't want you to follow her for that. But if you do want to see her scream about, Final Fantasy 14 or Gotcha Games, specifically Grand Blue. You know, that's where you can find her. Um, until next time, we love you very much. We love you. Stay safe. Wear your seatbelt. Wear Spay a mask. your pets. Keep your cat inside. Yeah. Cats don't go outside. It's coldy time. It's cold time. Take care of your baby, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And then it's warm time. Either way, take care of your animals. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.